it's a great pleasure for me to, uh, to be here. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of um, Stanford Cardiovascular Institute and also as a grantee uh, for CERN. Uh, and also um, as a co-founder for a new uh, startup company that we just started called uh, Stem Cell Diagnostics. So I'm a, a cardiologist by training, and I do uh, quite a bit of basic science. But I think over the past uh, couple of days, uh, I've been trying to get an honorary uh, MBA degree from listening to uh, what's going on <laughs> uh, here. Uh, I think there's been a lot of talk about uh, from Big Pharma uh, in terms of how, how do you push the IPA cells. Uh, but as I always uh, tell my students, uh, somebody's got to do the dirty uh, work. So we've been doing this uh, dirty work in terms of trying to show how IPA cells can be used for cardiac disease modeling, for cardiac drug screening, and cardiac cell therapy. And over the pa uh, next uh, 10 minutes, I'll kind of explain uh, where we are at each front. Uh, in terms of uh, disease modeling, uh, we go after large uh, diseases, uh, familial dilated cardiomyopathies in one example, most common cause of heart transplant in young kids, uh, in uh, young adults, uh, probably turns out to be uh, one of the more uh, common causes of heart transplant uh, in the future because as we know more about the geno uh, genomic uh, uh, makeup of a lot of these uh, patients whom we call idiopathic, just means we don't know what's going on, uh, a lot of them will eventually turn out to be familial dilated cardiomyopathy. So this is an example of how we uh, go after patients at the Stanford um, cardiology clinic, uh, <coughs> here's the uh, patient uh, who has the uh, disease. Uh, this father has a disease, uncle has a disease, uh, grandmother has a disease. We ask the whole family to show up, and we do a uh, whole exome sequencing to show that the mutation is at arginine to uh, tryptophan switch. It's a TNNP2 mutation, one of the most uh, common uh, uh, salcomeric uh, protein uh, in the myocardium. Uh, <coughs> the video is not playing here, but uh, we also do uh, embryo body differentiation, put the embryo bodies on the multi electrode arrays, and as the embryo body beats, you can record uh, the heart rate. So, for example, in this case here, the control patient, the heart rate goes up with no epinephrine challenge. However, the dilated patient, uh, the heart rate goes up, and with no epinephrine challenge, it poops out very fast. And this is exactly what you see in the clinic or in the CCU or ICU, meaning that uh, for normal patient, you can give them uh, no epinephrine challenge and the heart rate blood pressure will go up. Uh, for sick patients, you can give it transiently to boost the heart rate, boost the blood pressure, but over time, uh, it's actually quite toxic uh, to the myocardium. And this is what we see uh, in the uh, cardiomyocytes, the complete uh, disintegration of the myofibrils. So uh, we did a quite a bit of study. Uh, this uh, took us about two years to complete. Uh, again, uh, to summarize, we generated the IPA cells from a seven-member family. Uh, we did DNA sequencing to figure out what the mutation is, and we figured out kind of uh, the mechanism, and I think for this crowd, I won't go into exactly what the mechanism is, but uh, of relevance is the fact that we can take uh, common medications such as metoprolol or a genetic overexpression, CIRCA-2A, which is a uh, clinical gene therapy trial that's going on. Uh, in New York, uh, as well as the uh, rest of the uh, country, and to show that it can recapitulate results uh, from large uh, beta blocker trials and recent Qubit trials. Another example uh, would be familial hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, this is an example in which the heart uh, muscle thicken, uh, most common cause of uh, sudden cardiac death. Uh, in fact, you know, if you see any young athletes, uh, high school, college uh, kids who drop dead uh, in the football field, uh, basketball court. This is a diagnosis of exclusion. Um, luckily for us, uh, we had a large family cohort, but not so lucky for the family. Uh, we're able to get the skin biopsies of the large family cohort. Mother has a disease, eight of her, uh, she had eight kids. Four of the kids uh, have the mutation. Two of the kids already had the phenotype as shown by the black uh, box right here. On a single cell level, you can already see that the IPA cell-derived cardiomyocytes are bigger in size uh, compared to the control uh, patients. The IPA cell-derived cardiomyocytes are also more multinucleated. Again, to cut a very uh, long story short, because this also took us about two years to figure out exactly what the mechanism is, uh, we kind of figure out the mechanism of how this particular mutation, the myosin heavy chain mutation, causes uh, the hypertrophic response. We came in with different drugs, propanolol, lenolazine, lidocaine, mixolipine, uh, and also cyclosporin, SK506, and verapamil to block each one of these uh, effects. Now, keep in mind, this is the kind of study that you're not able to do in the past because 
you don't have access to the patient's uh, cardio mass cells, right? I mean, when we do a, a heart biopsy, the cells can only grow about, for about a couple of days before the cells just start pooping out. So this is a really a novel technology, in my opinion, a game changer in terms of uh, big pharma trying to figure out drugs that can be used for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or drugs that can be used for dilated cardiomyopathy. Uh, another example is cardiac uh, drug screening, and this is something that we've been working on for the past uh, several years, uh, starting first with the ESLs and then followed by IPSLs. This is a list of the medications that's been withdrawn uh, from the market because of uh, cardiac toxicity. I will always remember, um, I will always uh, remember Cisapri because uh, Cisapri was a common drug uh, that I used when I was a health staff. We used it for diabetic patients who had uh, gastroparesis. I probably given out about 500 prescriptions to Cisapri until uh, it was uh, withdrawn from the market uh, in 2000 because of long QT. I think, as you know, uh, the way Big Pharma does uh, drug screening a lot of times is using uh, CHO cells or HEX cells and overexpression with the HERC channel because, again, they don't have access to the uh, human cardiomyocytes. And this is a, a HEC, a HERC channel, uh, basically accounts of phase two and three of action potential that you see in a normal uh, human cardiomyocyte. This accounts for this uh, period right here. Basically, it does not account for all the other uh, channels that are present in the human cardiomyocytes. So there's been a lot of talk about using IPS cells or ES cells for uh, drug screening. We've actually been doing this kind of work uh, for a while. Uh, this is a manuscript that's under review uh, for resubmission. And the idea is that you take a common drug such as Cisapri and treat it against control patients, long QT patients, hypertrophic patients, dilated patients. You then treat it with different dose and you then start trying to create an encyclopedia of how the drug response would be of a given drug on multiple patients and vice versa of multiple drugs on a, on, a, on a single patient. This is another assay that we typically do. It's a single cell assay uh, showing that uh, these are all the patients uh, that you can uh, get hold of, human ES cells, long QT, hypertrophic dilated patients. You on a single cell level, we're looking for all the channel genes and to see what is the variation in terms of the channel gene expression of uh, the cardiomyocytes from all these patients. And ideally, in the future, we like to do it in a population level so I can build a, basically a bell curve to see um, on a population level how do these uh, channel genes uh, differ. And this is what we're getting at. Uh, at Stanford, we have this uh, effort to create a iPSL biorepository uh, for accelerating drug discovery. Our goal is to reach 1,000. Uh, we already have about 125. Uh, we do DNA-seq, RNA-seq on them. Also use uh, PharmGK to create a biorepository of how the human genetic variation will impact the drug response uh, based on the drug response that I showed you earlier. And more importantly, we kind of link it to the uh, STRIDE database, which is the uh, Stanford Translational Research Integrated Database Environment. And then for the next uh, few minutes, I'll talk about cell therapy. This is uh, tougher, and this is uh, part of the reason why we call the company Stem Cell Diagnostics. Gnostics meaning we can tackle the diagnostics part, but their part, it will be tougher for ESLs and for, and, uh, for IPSLs, especially for cardiovascular disease. A lot of issues that you need to consider, especially for IPSLs. Again, over the past couple of days, there's been a lot of discussions about how do you push this forward. But really, it's not just simple as taking IPS cells and inject them to a patient. Uh, you really got to think about what is the cell type, how do you reprogram, how do you differentiate, how do you make sure there's no tumor. Uh, we actually don't think autologous, uh, for cardiac applications, autologous would be a very difficult business model, so we're actually favoring allogeneic uh, IPS cells for cardiac. Preclinical model, safety and efficacy and commercialization interests. And I'll show you quickly how we've been uh, trying to tackle each one of these uh, issues. So in terms of the uh, cell type, uh, we actually like uh, fat cells because uh, most of us have uh, plenty to spare. And uh, we can get the fat cells. And it's much easier to reprogram, much faster to reprogram from uh, uh, unipotent uh, skin cell because since skin cells are unipotent, fat cells are multipotent. It's much easier to push it back. Uh, you shave off uh, the six weeks of eight weeks of uh, skin expansion because when we get uh, two liters of fat, 24 hours later, we will have about 100 million uh, adipose stromal cells ready to reprogram. 
The other one we like is uh, a reprogramming strategy. Uh, we uh, like the uh, uh, Lenny Circle, which is very similar to a episomal plasmid, except we inserted two intramolecular recombination sites here. And by adding a drug, we can pop off the bacterial backbone and just uh, sa save the uh, genes. So that this allows us uh, uh, to do episomal uh, reprogramming. I think uh, for uh, drug screening purpose, you could probably go with Sendai virus or uh, lentivirus, but uh, for clinical trials, you have to use, uh, you probably can't use the Sendai virus because of the origin of the virus. Um, <coughs> the other aspect we uh, look into is the cardiac differentiation. Uh, back in 2004, when I started the lab, uh, we were very happy if we could get 5% cardiac differentiation. Uh, right now, uh, it's routinely, you know, we can teach the technicians in the lab to do uh, cardiac differentiation. We routinely get 90 plus, 95 plus uh, cardiac differentiation. And this kind of tells you how the technique has uh, evolved uh, over time. And this is a review article if uh, people are interested in uh, looking at this. Um, so we get this patient's fat and we reprogram a mini circle. We differentiate the cardiomyocyte. There's also a potential that these cells can cause a tumor, I, although I think the uh, uh, risk of having a tumor is much less because we have improved on the cardiac differentiation te technology. Having said that, uh, we've also developed imaging uh, technologies that could track a cell limits behavior and ablate teratoma. And, uh, for example, uh, in this case here, let me just get this. <coughs> so in this case here, for example, if you inject uh, cells and some of the cells happen to have a teratoma, you could come in and these cells are expressing the HSV-TK reporter and suicide gene. You can come in and give gangcyclovir to wipe out the uh, teratoma, whereas the control animals, when you come in with sedin, nothing happens and eventually the uh, animal uh, uh, succumb to the uh, teratomas. And then another issue that we have to address is the immunogenicity. We've been working on this uh, for the past four to five years. Initially, uh, we had thought that the traditional immunosuppressive drug would do the job, meaning cyclosporin, mycophenolate, tacolimus, uh, the drugs that we commonly use for our heart, transplant pa uh, heart transplant patients. But they actually don't work that well in our experience. So it took us another three years, uh, from 2008 to 2011, to screen more than 100 compounds to come up with this uh, cosine blocker uh, and just to quickly show what happens, so this is the allogeneic human iPSL, undifferentiated, and in this case here, if you take human iPSL, undifferentiated, inject into an immunocompetent mouse, everything gets rejected as, it, as you would expect, put it into a not skid, and it forms a teratoma, as you would expect. However, if you put it into an immunocompetent animal that's been treated with cosine blocker, you can see the cells actually engraft the virus uh, quite well, and this uh, uh, combination works uh, also for ESLs, for iPSLs, and also for ESL, iPSL derivatives. And the last thing is, uh, you know, we've been talking to the FDA about uh, pushing this uh, to um, clinical trial, and then I think from an academic standpoint, we want to be one of the first uh, sites to do uh, ESL, iPSL work uh, for cardiovascular disease. And the FDA asked us for t uh, large animal models. We initially started with a canine model, meaning take a dog, create a heart attack, get the fat, make iPS cells, differentiate, re-inject back into the same dog. As though, you know, it's the same uh, protocol as you would see when a patient shows up with a heart attack, get the fat, make iPS, differentiate, re-inject back in the same. So we demonstrated proof of principle is ab uh, we're able to do that. We got a lot of uh, heat uh, from the USDA because dogs are very difficult to work with, so now we've kind of switched to the po uh, portion model much easier because uh, people don't care about uh, pigs. Um, and uh, so this is our standard model. Again, take a uh, pig fat cells, make IPS, differentiate, re-inject back in the same uh, pig model here. So with all those uh, data, uh, again, thanks uh, to some, we're able to uh, get a some disease team grant whereby at the end of the five years, we want to take uh, human ESL-derived cardiomyocytes, inject into patients who are undergoing LVAD, 
and during the process, we're able to expand the heart, look at the cells carefully to see exactly what happened to the cardiomyocytes. And we're getting a lot of help from Joe Gold, uh, who used to be the senior uh, uh, stem cell biologist at Jerwan, who's now uh, working uh, for us at uh, Stanford. And this is quite a complicated process right here, but I'm pretty sure the, uh, along the way we will learn a lot, and I'm pretty sure along the way we will generate a lot of IP uh, as well. So th these are the folks uh, in my lab, and I just want to tell you a uh, two two couple slides about the company. So this is a uh, stem cell diagnostics uh, company. Uh, I did name the company Stem Cell Diagnostics. Started by Andrew Lee, who's an MD, PhD student at Stanford. Bobby Robbins, who's the uh, Cardiovascular uh, Institute Director. Soon to be the president and CEO of the uh, Texas uh, Medical Center, and myself. And I put down uh, Andrew's uh, email there. Um, We've generated about 120 patient and disease-specific IPS lines, including dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, lung QT, uh, ARVD, uh, doxorubicin-induced uh, heart failure, especially for those uh, who are interested in chemotherapy drugs uh, and congenital heart disease and others. Uh, the company was awarded a Phase one SBIR grant from NSF. The core technology has been published in, in the science translation of medicine and also in cell stem cell and we've obtained exclusive uh, licensing uh, as approved by uh, Stanford. Uh, Andrew asked me to put this uh, down uh, because, again, I'm a scientist and a cardiologist, so we really need help on this. Uh, what exactly are we looking for? We're looking for commercial partnership for drug discovery, especially in the area of heart failure, arrhythmia, and chemo-induced uh, heart failure. Commercial partnerships uh, for preclinical uh, drug toxicity uh, screening, C funding to commercialize the first products and expand laboratories, and then uh, long-term partnership uh, for pluripotent stem cell-based therapy, which is going to take us another about three to four years to work out uh, all the issues that I kind of uh, uh, listed up there. And if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to email me or email uh, Andrew. And thank you very much for your attention.